Let's rejoin Tonya and Connie back in the Food Systems Laboratory at NASA Johnson Space Center. All of the food packages have a label on them and it identifies the food and it has some rehydration and heating information. This is vegetable quiche and it actually says to add 50 milliliters of hot water and to heat for five to 10 minutes. So there are guidelines, they don't have to guess. Um, this amount is so that the food properly hydrates and this time is so that it has the time to properly hydrate and then it's at its optimum for consuming. The fuel cells used on the shuttle not only provide energy to run vehicle systems, but also produce water as a byproduct. Rather than dispose of this water, astronauts use it to help rehydrate their food. This system works so well that about half of the food and beverages now consumed aboard the shuttle are in the freeze-dried form. To help food move from the freeze-dried form to an edible meal, a piece of equipment called a rehydrator is used. The rehydrator measures the correct amount of water needed to be added to each food or drink packaged and allows the crew member to choose either hot or chilled water. Once the water is added to the food, it can be eaten in a matter of a few minutes. Although this might not sound very appealing, most crews give high marks for the food that's prepared for their missions. Why are some of these items packaged differently than others? The different types of food items determine what type of package the food is packaged in. All of our freeze-dried rehydratables are in this what we call an EDO package. It's this clear package that has a septum so that the food can be rehydrated. The other types of foods that are in clear packages are what we call our bite size or just natural form foods, granola bars, cookies, candies, nuts. They're all in these clear types of packages. This is what was developed for the food system. However, these types of food packages are not 100% oxygen and moisture impermeable. They're actually overwrapped in these types of foil packages. We also provide condiments. Peanut butter is actually one of the condiments that we provide, very popular. We also have mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, Tabasco sauce, relish, you name it. If we don't have it as a standard condiment, we'll get it for a crew member if they request it, specifically if they're on the space station and they request it. We want to keep them very happy. We also have salt and pepper, um, not your regular salt and pepper though, um, because if you had a regular salt and pepper shaker, it would go everywhere but the food and that would create a huge mess. So we have liquid salt and pepper and this is a saline solution, just salt and water. And then this is pepper. Um, it's a pepper extract in vegetable oil. We are in Houston, so tortillas are a specialty, I assume. Tortillas are very special. They might be one of the most popular food items that we have on the menu. They not only serve as a food item, they actually work as a tool also. They have replaced bread, and the astronauts use tortillas to make every combination that you could dream of. So is all the food made here at Johnson? Not all of the food is made here at the Johnson Space Center. There are some food items that are what we call COTS, commercially off-the-shelf items, things like candy-coated chocolates or a granola bar or crackers that we will actually buy from a food service distributor or from the grocery store and then they're repackaged. Those are food items that don't need to be developed specifically for space flight. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Do you put any special markings or anything on the packages so everybody knows whose food is whose? All of the food items are actually color-coded. Each astronaut has a color that belongs to them. Right now, the station astronauts have red, yellow, and green dots, and so all they have to do is look on their food package, and in this corner of the label is a color dot, and so if you're red, you can look for your red food. Now, if it's regular menu food, you might not be so hurt if someone happens to eat your red carrot coins, but if it's bonus food that you've specifically picked out for yourself, you're not going to be so happy when someone eats something that has a red dot on it or came out of a box that had your name on it. Okay, some astronauts say that food actually tastes different once they get up there than what they've had down here when they were eating it. How do you compensate for that? That is true. Some astronauts do note that food tastes different in orbit as opposed to what it tastes like here on the ground. One of the reasons that that could happen is there is a fluid shift when astronauts are in microgravity and so because of that fluid shift it might actually lessen their taste and smell perception. Also most of what when you're eating most of what you're tasting comes from actually from what you're smelling so if there is that fluid shift um, you might not be smelling as much therefore not tasting things that um, may not appear to be as flavorful but we do actually take some measures to compensate for that. 
We offer Tabasco sauce. We offer picante sauce and hot sauce, things to jazz it up, spice things up a little bit. Some astronauts' taste change from Earth to when they are in orbit. Someone says that they can't live without orange juice for breakfast, then when they get into space, they can't stand orange juice. There's not necessarily an explanation for it, it just sometimes happens. Or some astronauts don't particularly like something on the ground, and when they're up there, they can't get enough of it. When an astronaut's getting ready to go into orbit, how do they decide what they're going to eat? How do they pick the food and create a menu for themselves? The astronauts come to our lab and they actually go through a process called approbation, where they consume the menu the way it has been planned for them. So they will come to our lab and they will eat breakfast, they'll eat the entire, entire breakfast that's planned for them, then they'll eat lunch, and that gives them the opportunity to eat the food as they would in space and see how much they like it. Because when they're in our lab going through a food evaluation session, they're only eating one or two bites of each food item and that's not a good indicator um, or a very good indicator of how well they like a food. When they come in and they sit down and they eat breakfast and they eat an entire serving of scrambled eggs or an entire serving of waffles, then they can say, yeah, I like it that much. I definitely want that on my menu or no way. Just a bite or two is enough. I'm not eating that. Or they might decide that they like something so much that they want it to repeat more than once on their menu, so that gives them the opportunity to taste everything again, give feedback before their menu is finalized, because it is very important that the astronauts eat exactly what they want and they're never given something that they don't like. On early missions, shuttle crews were all given the exact same meal to eat. Although always nutritious, astronauts would sometimes be stuck with a food they didn't like. NASA scientists soon realized personalized meals made more sense. So after the seventh shuttle mission, NASA began allowing each astronaut to choose their own menu. Currently, International Space Station astronauts can choose from hundreds of different food items to make up their personal menu. When an astronaut's menu's been chosen, it's analyzed by a dietitian to make sure it's nutritionally appropriate. Once the menu's approved, the meals are packaged and placed in containers for spaceflight. This is a food container that they use on the International Space Station. This is what all of their food items are stowed in. Um, it's labeled on three sides with labels. All of the American food that is on the space station has a blue label, and all of the Russian food containers have red labels. And each label has a lot of information on it. It describes what kind of food container it is. We've broken foods down into different categories. This actually is a meat and entrees container. It has a container number, so for inventory tracking purposes, we have that. Barcode also serves for that purpose. A big number nine that shows what ISS Expedition crew um, gets this container. So when they're unloading and moving around containers, because space is at a premium on the space station, it's a lot easier to identify your missions increment number and of course bilingual labels so we have things in Cyrillic. Food items are stowed in these containers very efficiently. Um, every bit of the space is utilized and what's unique about these containers is they're actually collapsible. These pins remove from these containers and these walls collapse so it encourages the crew members to break these containers down. They're actually recyclable containers. Each one of these food containers actually holds enough food for three crew members for one day. So that gives you an idea of how much food is required and just how much space it takes up. With feedback from the crews, the food being processed for space is moving even closer to being as Earth-like as possible. The most requested food item for astronauts in space is shrimp cocktail. Some other favorites include steak, lemonade, and brownies. Coming up on part two of this special edition of Destination Tomorrow, Jennifer Pulley speaks with Michelle Perchonik about how NASA plans to feed astronauts in the future. And Johnny Alonzo speaks with astronaut Mike Fole about what it's actually like to live and eat in space. But first, did you know the term a square meal came from the fact that early British soldiers carried a small square cutting board with them to be used at mealtimes? When a soldier had enough food to cover the cutting board, he had a square meal. That's all for this edition of NASA's Destination Tomorrow. I'm Kara O'Brien. For all of us here at NASA, we'll see you next time.